All right, Chris Button here with the exclusive tour of the Sun FRS. There is the car on the poster, and here's the car. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna give a talk because we should. Okay, we're gonna have a talk. Have Everybody talk. gather around. Everybody gather around. <laughs> I just wanted to come it's in and take pictures of it. Come and hold hands. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sinkumaya. What's that? It's pretty good on Google. Oh, super cool guy. Okay. Uh, Um, the idea is sort of a return to the classic sports car to the pure simple driving sports car. Basically our view is that the trend of the industry is sort of away from the focus on the driver and more of the focus on the machine. So you get more turbo, you get hundreds of hundreds of horsepower, you got big wide tires, you got computers controlling the car. And somewhere lost in all that is sort of the driver and their actual driving skill. And this is meant to show sort of, you know, let the driver stand out and, um, and really show what the car can do. So it's really just a pure light car, two liter boxer engine, um, jointly developed by, uh, by Toyota and Subaru. Uh, four cylinder boxer engine with direct, uh, direct end port injection system, which is a Toyota system, uh, powering a rear wheel drive platform with a standard with a slip differential. Um, very, very light car, a lot of steps have been taken to make sure the car is light for emphasis on performance, and for the sun low center of gravity, which is the all helps helps handling. Um, center of gravity, actually, this car is in line with a lot of exotic cars like Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And any sort of more normal, I guess, car, even uh, like three series BMWs and uh, Impreza's, that kind of thing, is actually significantly higher center of gravity than this car. So you actually notice a lot of the car you sit low, it's based low, and it handles very, very well. Um, a few other things. Uh, for basically 50 50 front and rear, rear uh, weight distribution um, for that for perfect, uh, perfect handling. Um, available with um, manual automatic transmission, both of which are six speed. Uh, the automatic is quite a, a fast shift, uh, six, uh, six speed with uh, paddle shifters, it uses ISF technology, so really fast uh, throttle lift down shifts, uh, really fun to drive. I myself drove that one, handling's great. Really good uh, sound from the car when you're driving, a really good road presence, you can really feel connected to the road. Uh, lots of good feedback, you don't feel isolated at all, which makes it uh, really stand out from its competitors. Um, you can tell the emphasis is really on the driving though, so sacrifices have been made basically every, every step of the way, not sacrifices, actually choices um, to make sure that it, it, it suits the driver. So if you think that people might say, why doesn't it have a sunroof? You put a sunroof on the car, it adds a lot of weight very high up in the car and affects handling. In fact, the roof is made of aluminum and steel to, to try and drive the center of the down lower. Um, likewise, this will be the only Scion that doesn't have steering wheel mounted audio controls. The reason it doesn't, I asked Chief Engineer why. And he basically said if I picked a steering wheel that had um, steering wheel mount audio controls, I would have it, had to make it a little bit wider and it would have affected the handling of the car and the way the car feels. So every single step of the way um, is, uh, is basically taken to make sure that the driver is the one that's having, having all the fun. Um, the styling is reminiscent of the uh, Toyota 2000 GT, um, so it's really a car that comes from, uh, from Toyota's heritage. You can see that in the side profile of the car with the aggressive fender flare on the flares coming over the, the stone roof. Um, you get a nod to the, to the uh, A86 here in the back, which depicts a um, horizontally opposed engine with an 8.6. Uh, I just want to see. It's actually going to have surprisingly good fuel economy for a car of this of this style, which is quite good. And that's we get that from the direct board injection, actually get that from the boxer engine. So um, it's actually going to be a great great car to use as a daily driver, but also also on the track. Well, speaking of track, it actually. Uh, you know, when we talk about luggage um, capacity for uh, cars, we should talk about the number of golf club bags full of food, which isn't really related to this car. But we have checked, uh, and as the chief engineer says, with the seats folded flat, we can fit uh, a full set of track tire and a jack and a toolbox and a race helmet all in the backseat of the car, so we don't have to throw that stuff into the track. That's what you want to do. any questions about uh, we don't have the stat. We don't, I mean, when you look at the competitors, it should be uh, very, very well placed amongst them. We don't have the final testing yet, so we'll see it. But we still have the document. I mean, the clear, the clear point of the car is the, uh, is the performance, but it's nice to see that uh, you know, one group uh, not focus too much on gas. Um, definitely the tight, tight turns. So um, we had it on a, a slalom uh, pylon course. 
and it's really, really nimble in there. Even at, at, at high speeds, just, just kind of really, really, it's very responsive. Where did you drive it at? Sorry. Uh, so I drove it actually at uh, the Toyota Arizona Proving Grounds, which is Toyota's uh, super top secret uh, testing facility in the desert outside of Phoenix. Uh, it's not so top secret anymore, yeah. eh? Well, no, 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 it was right next to Area 51. So when they bring you there, yeah, pretty much black bag on your head, and yeah, kind of <laughs> straight out of that thing. No top. Yeah, it's, it's a cool place actually. It was it was like a hundred degrees in the, in the shade there. Really kind of kind of a scary place. But uh, we test drove this against what we figured to be its core competitor, which would be uh, Genesis Group, uh, Civic S, uh, WRX, and um, it's the GTI. Um, the only no, rear wheel drive car in all of that, which is the Genesis. So you, I mean, you. By comparison, it's a lot larger than this. The handles kind of like a sled compared to this. It really, I mean, this is forty car, but this is so much smaller, so much more compact that you really get much better. Okay. Sorry. Definitely, uh, definitely weight and handling, power to weight, style in my opinion, size for what it's actually built for. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely meant to be the driver's car that focuses on, on the driving experience. So it will definitely separate, you know, who can drive and who can't, as opposed to just relying on the car's going to drive. going to this I did not, unfortunately, but I've seen ample YouTube footage which suggests that that's definitely the case. Um, there are two uh, buttons on the car. One is a VSE one is a, is a VSE off that turns all uh, computer-aided control systems off except for ABS. And the other one is actually sort of a sport handling button that's somewhere in between the two that gives it a little more freedom. But uh, the, uh, the chief engineer was sure to make sure, was definitely make sure that there's a button you can push to take all of the system off. To make sure you get that button control environment. And officially, when is it going to be in stores? Uh, late May of this year, so just a couple of months away. Uh, we should have uh, you know, a good number out there, so it'll be uh, really exciting for everybody. Any answers on the next stuff? Uh, APX stuff. Um, Such as whether is he upgraded all your units? So we will have audio options, um, like we do now on the rest of our models. Uh, no leather available from us, or from the, the other similar crowd. Um, what else? From APXM, we'll have the new kind of accessories that we have at launch. TRD is developing uh, performance accessories that are available shortly after launch. Uh, and that would be your suspension, your exhaust, uh, your brakes, uh, strut tire marks, and those parts. What are the brakes like? What are the brakes like? To be honest, I didn't. Sorry? I do not know that enough to tell you. What haven't we asked? Uh, what haven't you asked? What's your favorite? About the marketing. You haven't asked about the marketing. Marketing. <laughs> I asked you about marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually, that's a good point because we're actually doing a fair amount of this car. You guys have all been to the micro side. I assume sign up for us on CA, mm -hmm. um, which has actually been recognized sort of in North America wide. Actually, the guys in the US have found us about some of the stuff we've done on that site because there's a lot more on it than any other distributor has done. And the reason we did that basically was because we want to make sure that people are excited about the car now, knowing it's not coming to May and a lot of them kind of in market in March. And so it's sort of opportunity for them to get excited about the car and maybe stick it out for it to arrive. Um, we will have a uh, mass marketing for TV and uh, all that stuff. It's actually pretty cool stuff. Um, we'll be coming out. And uh, we're going to be featuring this car in all of our, our grassroots events, all of our track events. It's going to be the car that's going to be this year's to the channel. It's actually uh, it's focused on it as opposed to just the uh, a lot in store for the car. That's really going to be the hill of science on marketing for this year. What about social media wise? Are you guys doing anything like Facebook, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's actually, that's sort of the pre launch of this car was really long to the point that about a year ago or maybe six months ago, people started getting tired of hearing about it. Yeah. It wasn't coming. That's why I saw that too. Uh, but now that we actually have the real car, we know it's coming. We're going to pick it up for sure. At the Toronto show, because Toronto and the sort of GTA had the, had the largest number of. Uh, who are active on our Facebook and on our Twitter, we invited them in uh, to come look at the car and see what they're doing now. And the social media feedback on that was just absolutely nuts in terms of the, the FT86 blogs and everything else, all the, all the forums. They were basically the first group of enthusiasts to actually get inside the car and experience it up close. And there was a lot of good social media coverage on it. So we're looking to try and get uh, influencers like that in the car as much as we can do. We're doing a press event too with mainstream journalists and bloggers. Uh, at a track, all the way back in early May to make sure this.
these guys were really excited to all the time. What about uh, mainstream? Mainstream on TV, out of home. Uh, magazines will focus on uh, you know, sort of more enthusiastic sports magazines like Past Magic PR. Uh, whereas online ads will all focus on, on like banner, that kind of thing. Uh, I've seen, I saw rough cuts of the spots last week and I, I'll have to wait until the next week. They're actually going to show them in probably a month or so, but they're really compelling. Cool. Based on the pre-orders that are coming to you already, are we going to have an issue with the building coming down the road? Do we know? Any idea I'll be the, the 20th see. factory, I just say no. <laughs> but I'm actually, I'll tell you why I'm confident that we're not going to have problems. Um, we have a pretty aggressive plan for the year uh, in terms of the numbers, and it's been largely front loaded in uh, May and June and July, just because this season out, we don't want to have a lot of interest by the end of to sell these cars. So we're targeting a two per dealer at the end of the month, uh, at the end of May, that is, and uh, we should have a fair big quantity coming out the way after that. All the time you've spent with the car, is there anything that you feel like they missed out on? Is there anything that I feel like they missed out on? Or that you would tweak on the car personally? Um, I don't know that I've driven enough to make that comment. Um, I think I think what's most compelling about the car though is that it's the opportunity for us to sort of tell the story about why you don't need 500 horsepower to find a car. Uh, and that's kind of what this what this is about. That's the story that we need to figure out how to tell people because you know, there's sort of a natural reaction to say like, oh, you know, because you have Actually, it's a vehicle, and, and that's wasted on the roads we drive on, and a lot of the tracking cars we drive on. And this is the car that you really need to have fun and practice your driving and become an actual performance driver. I would say, though, that you can, it's funny when you talk to people about the car. We have, I, I sat, when the enthusiasts were there, I sat in the passenger and they all drive, and we talked about 30 or 40 of them driving. And 90% you know, of them get in, they ask you questions about what's the engine, what's the center of gravity, where really about this, and, and a whole lot of questions that I couldn't answer. And then maybe the rest of them kind of get in and have to say, oh, the back seat's not big enough. And where's the sunroof? And, you know, else? and I think our job is to maybe realize that this, is gonna, this car's going to attract a lot of people, maybe not all of them. This might not be the right car for some people if, they, if they're hoping they can you know, turn into a functional family car, but they still want a sporty car, that's why we have the test. So we need to figure out sort of internally how you make sure that, that well, that's a good point because there's been questions from a lot of people about a lot of guys at the dealerships is what's this going to do to TC, right? So TC is not going to go away, and it's just we've got a sports car and we got a sporty car. So if it's not for that particular person that's turned on by not having a sunroof and that, well, then you still you have options, right? So actually, we tested that in the focus group we did that will be in LA. Um, they had, they showed this with its three competitors, and after everyone had sort of evaluated the appearance of this car, they showed them the TC, and found there was actually very little overlap between people who wanted this car and not wanted the TC. I think that because they're both two-door coupes, they're sort of similar, but when you get down to it, this is rear-wheel drive, it's not functional for more than two people, it's really designed for a driving experience. The TC has more headroom in the back than other cars, <laughs> even though it's sporty and drives well, it's a lot more functional. So it really is two different people. We just have to make sure we're able to identify who people are. Which one do you work for? This one. <laughs> no I buy one in May. I, I currently track a IS300. It's so about 10 years old, so it's about time to get some less. What's the first thing you're going to do? From a modification standpoint? It depends on what's available, but what I would do, like my, my current car has has um, brakes and strut tire parts in front of me right now. I still have those parts in the I would like to do most of that right away. Certainly suspension, uh, exhaust, and maintenance. It depends on what's available in the first year. Now, with the sporting suspension, how rough is the ride? Uh, it's a sporty ride. It's not too rough, though, but it is, it is a sporty ride for sure. But it's not, it's not, I mean, I, like my other ride, I just think you feel like you want to get into the ride on the road. But this isn't at that simple at all, but it's very, it's definitely very firm. It's, it's focused on me. Did you compare to the gears No, no. No, this obviously prototype type. Reasoning behind the 17-inch drivers versus TC from the standard Granted, front to rear, but um, I feel a little 
kind of sad about 17s on this car. There's a few ways to look at that. One is I would say the card's kind of a blank. Like if you're going to use the cards because the back goes up as a track card for this card, it's kind of a blank canvas for work to figure out what you want to do. Um, and wheels and tires are kind of the first thing that people tend to do on the car a lot of times. So you know, I would say, you know, do you want to choose the performance wheels and tires for the track that's used? If, if that's what they want to do, or would you rather let them choose? The 17 is really look great. Um, the tires on them are readily available. Um, they actually have great breakaway characteristics. I mean, they're not they're not uh, crazy aggressive, but that's kind of the point. Because it's a simple sports car, it's it's designed to have fun in. They break really easily because it's fun to do. Um, and if you want to actually pick around the track and you want to get specs or whatever else, you're going to get different tires. What's exactly? 53.47. Yeah. Okay, so I'm basically saying 50. It would depend on, yeah, I mean, it would depend on, it would depend on a few things. First of all, spec's not always final, and then it would depend on rumors and where it's actually coming from. But the spec documents are similar to the first step. That could change, right? Like, I couldn't even tell you the exact weight, because they actually, actually, funny, I'm talking about the same Just like, I plan on fine-tuning the car until the day production starts, in terms of handling, in terms of exhaust, and that would be interesting. Do you want a worse car? 153. Why so? It was a small displacement engine, so it's not surprising, but um, we went with, with the naturally aspirated engine for a lot of reasons. Everything I talked about in terms of sort of back and return was a really good sports car. Also, has really good um, uh, power and torque characteristics throughout the whole van, which you don't get with the production. Um, so, certainly, uh, as a starting point for a bad way it's the right way to control the car. But there's loads of room in the engine car. Which means what? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Anybody want to jump up, get a picture with Dan? Sweetness. <laughs> 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 